G'day legends, I hope that you're doing really well and having a fantastic Thursday or whatever day you're actually watching this. Lily and I both hit PRs on squats this morning in the gym, so that is a very good start to the day. So today we're going to talk about some layoffs at uh, Territorial Defence, Ukraine operating maybe in Africa, some planes coming down, a lot of this. But where we have to really start is Poland. And there's a lot going on between Ukraine and Poland. Now, Poland has been one of Ukraine's biggest supporters throughout this entire war. And Poland has announced today that it will not supply Ukraine with any more weapons. The Polish Prime Minister has said, we are no longer transferring weapons to Ukraine because we are now arming Poland with more modern weapons. So all of this has come after Ukraine has threatened legal action against Poland when Poland announced it will continue restricting Ukraine's grain. And Poland wasn't happy with the comments made by President Zelensky from Ukraine at the United Nations summit that is happening at the moment. With a quote from Zelensky saying, it is alarming to see how some in Europe, play out solidarity in a political theory, making a thriller from the grain. They may seem to play their own role, but in fact, they are helping set a stage to a Moscow actor. And I get Ukraine's position in this, and I guess their interest, but Poland has done so much for Ukraine, from direct support, rallying other countries, and themselves taking on millions upon millions of refugees, and giving years of support. I've been in Poland multiple times since this war and their support for Ukraine, the NGOs going in and out for Ukrainians, everything has been absolutely unbelievable. And Poland's even skirted around rules like in the beginning donating fighter planes but saying, oh no, they're just as parts. So let's have a look at how this has really come out. We've got um, some stuff from the BBC. This is where I first actually then saw this broken. One of Ukraine's staunchest allies, Poland, has announced it will no longer supply weapons to the country as a diplomatic dispute over grain escalates. The country's prime minister said it would focus on arming itself with more modern weapons, like what I just said in the beginning. That was the quote from him. On Tuesday, Poland summoned Ukraine's ambassador over comments made by President Zelensky to the UN, what we just spoke about, He had said, solidarity with Ukraine, which Warsaw denounced as unjustified concerning Poland, which has supported Ukraine since the first days of the war. Poland's Prime Minister announced the decision to no longer supply Ukraine with weapons in a televised address on Wednesday after a day of rapidly escalating tensions between the two. So we spoke about this yesterday. We saw something happening there, but I don't think any of us expected it then to go this far. So, of course, this is about the grain. That, in turn, led to large quantities of grain ending up in Central Europe. So, of course, they could the ship lanes were closed. That Then Ukraine could move their grain out through Poland, Romania, places like this. And a lot of these countries cracked the shits over this. Then, of course, the EU temporarily banned imports of the grain to Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Slovakia to protect them. But then the ban was then lifted. But these countries then decided on keeping their own rules in this. And... At the end of the day, I know the EU, NATO, a lot of the West, or all the West, I guess, stands in solidarity with Ukraine in the war. But these are still individual states. And if Poland or Romania or Slovakia or whatever wants to say, we'll do all this, but we're not going to do this bit, well, they sort of can do it. It's, it is very important for all countries to keep some level of independence as well. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree on this particular issue, but these countries can still do that. Anyway, earlier this week, Ukraine filed lawsuit, uh, lawsuits to the World Trade Organization, the WTO, against those countries over the bans, which it said were a violation of international obligations. Ukraine's minister, Yulia this said it is it is crucially important for us to provide that at individual member states cannot ban imports of Ukrainian goods. So it is difficult in this because Ukraine, although it might be you know in line with the EU, they're not an EU member. So it is uh, it is difficult there. And these EU members, like I said, they're still individual independent states. And someone's pissed off Poland a lot in this. I'm going to talk more about where this could go. So Poland said they would keep the ban in place and a complaint before the WTO does not impress us. The French foreign minister, this said on the to EU study, revealed Ukrainian grain imports would not cripple European farmers and described the tensions as re- regrettable. So here we talk about the support for Ukraine defends itself against Russia. And Ukraine, sorry, Poland has given a lot of support. 
And whilst we know that Poland isn't the biggest supplier of weapons into Ukraine, it has definitely taken on most refugees wanting to go that way. There's still a lot of refugees have gone to Russia as well. They don't speak about that, but there's a lot of people have gone that way too. But they've gone west. The majority have gone through Poland or still remain in Poland. And as well, Poland is home to the repair facilities for the Western vehicles that are badly damaged that can't be repaired in country as well. It's a transit country. Now, we spoke about this yesterday as well. Now, this came from uh, Andrew Duda saying it would be good for Ukraine to remember that it receives help from us and to remember that we are also a transit country to Ukraine. So, of course, everything needs to go through Poland from there. And I don't see that these rising tensions at all will do any good for Ukraine, that it's going to affect Ukraine far more than it will affect Poland. So there's been a lot of speculation about this. And, you know, could this be cracks starting to show you know, Poland saying they're focusing more on modern weapons to protect themselves. Well, Poland's main threat is Russia. So maybe they could see this war extending and wanting more of then those modern weapon systems. So there's been a lot of speculation about what this means. Of course, most of the support comes from the US, including the majority of NATO support in. But still, like they say, transit country, it's still very important and being like the closest allied countries with each other this yeah this does show some issues there and now poland eu nato they they won't be too affected by this but ukraine i don't know i think you'd be definitely in ukraine's best interest to try and sort something out here and if i i don't know i can see where both sides are coming from in this ukraine being like this is our only real look we need this more so but yeah, I completely get it. And I, I understand individuals and um, states protecting their own interests first. So let's go over as well something else that has come up is Sarah Aston Cerulea has become uh, from the front line, has then gone journalist, now works for the uh, territorial defence. And we've been on this channel a lot. Now, this did come out the other day and I thought, I couldn't really be stuffed talking about it, but it did concern me a little bit with it. So let's actually have a watch Russia over this. the truth that their obsessive focus on a Ukrainian volunteer is simply allowing the light of the Ukrainian nation's honesty to shine brightly. Next week, the teeth of the Russian devils will gnash ever harder and their rabid mouths will foam in uncontrollable frenzy as the world will see a favorite Kremlin propagandist pay for their crime. So... Referring, I believe, to Gonzo Lira. And this puppet of Putin is only the first. Russia's war criminal propagandists will all be hunted down and justice will be served. So war criminal propagandists will be hunted down. Hunted down. That's a pretty big thing to say. And and who? Who is saying what is a Kremlin propagandist? Is this someone who is on the fucking FSB payroll? Is it? What what limit does this have? Because even people send this to me, like, Willie, like, is this because I would not call myself a propagandist at all. If anything, my political views are more actually pro Ukraine. I've spent many many months in Ukraine as well, supplied you know, um, humanitarian aid, what, whatever. I've spoken to heaps of Ukrainian soldiers and whatever from there. But you know, little things where people will say you're a propagandist for Russia, whatever, as well as you know, oh, you're an informational terrorist from you know, Ukrainian bloody things, does this mean you're hunting down someone like like I? Well, you know, we're going to see how this was received. As we in Ukraine are led on this mission by faith in God, liberty, and complete liberation. So I think the words hunted down were not well and been laid off. Let's see at what the Territorial Defence has come out with then today. The statement of the command of the Territorial Defence of the Armed Forces of Ukraine regarding some statements of the spokesperson of the TDF, Junior Sergeant Sarah Ashton Srilio. The statements made by Junior Sergeant Ashton in recent days were not approved by the command of the TDF or the command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. When conducting military operations against the aggressor, the defence forces of Ukraine strictly observe the norms of international humanitarian law. That said, this is my screenshot. This came out 11 days ago. The video Ashton released, that was probably a week ago, or within a week, but days and days. So it, I'm sort of thinking it could have been backlash that's really brought this up. And oh, shit, you know, anyway. 
The command of the TDF will conduct an official investigation into the circumstances of these statements. Appropriate decisions would be taken. Um, Sergeant Sarah will be suspended immediately pending the investigation. And of course, having to lay out here that they observe the norms of international humanitarian law and that now she's been uh, pretty much laid off and investigation is then pending. So it's one of those things. It's, you know, hunting down. When I first saw it, I thought that is a really fucking bad look there. And what, what I do with everything in this is imagine if that was vice versa. You know, well, we're going to hunt down any Ukrainian propagandists from that side. People would be up in arms. And I believe that this was a fairly bad look and they've really turned back on that. But with these press things, I thought all that would have been approved before it got put out anyway, especially if you're a official representative of that. But I'm not really sure. So only a few days ago, in reference to Attackums, Zelensky has said, we are on the finishing line. I'm sure of that as these missiles would give further range and ability for Ukraine to strike more in Crimea. Of course, we've seen the Storm Shadow Scalp. These are somewhat similar to those systems in at least the range, whatever as well, a bit faster, but would give that equivalent sort of range. And you know, everyone thought that these were going to come in the next aid package. Well, the US aid package has been announced today, and it did not include the Attackums, which, of course, Ukraine has been rallying for from really the start of this war. As this was described by large pro-Ukrainian Twitter accounts as another idiotic decision by Biden that will only hurt Ukraine during this war, so you can, I can see why that was disappointed, but a uh, disappointing. But in this, it's very difficult. I I think the attackers would be a good option for the front line here. It would really give an extra ability from that. So let's actually look what was in then this package. So it included. Um, the TOW and AT-4 anti-tank weapons, guided multiple launch rocket systems, the GMLRS. So these are rockets for, of course, the HIMARS, the Javelin anti-tank missiles. And these have actually now been, because they're making them in more, they're being made in a joint venture between Lockheed and RTX. And of course, a lot of ammunition and 155mm shells and of course, the cluster munitions to go with this. Now, this was made by the Presidential Drawdown Authority, which allows Biden to transfer will transfer um, weapons, funds, things like this without congressional approval, of course, then it has to be during an emergency, but drawing down on that fund. We know there was some weird accounting things done on that on that fund and more money has been seen in from there, but a lot disappointed about those attackums not then going in. Now, there's been a lot of claims of uh, planes as well. So I did see this pop up from an account saying a Su-34 had crashed um, from Russia here. And you can see there's no canopy on here. And then let's look at what then uh, fighter bomber has said. He says the Su-34 crashed in Vorozhnya, a region. One of the main landing gear failed after all the actions to try and release her being landing gear, remove her in every way possible in the impossible way. The crew went to the ejection zone and left the plane. On a Su-34, one of the main one is released landing without landing gear is impossible. You're supposed to eject. Uh, what are they done? Everyone is safe. Everything is fine. So this is a pro-Russian account, the fighter bomber, ex-fighter uh, bomber pilot from Russia, and this is where you get a lot of the confirmation on what has actually happened on this. It's actually fairly open about choppers, um, planes, things like this. So that has gone down there. We don't know the extent of any injuries, whatever. It's still, of course, a pro-Russian account, but more information on that photograph there, of course, being doused uh, then in the foam. Now, we know and there's been a lot of like drone strike going both ways. So on the morning of September 20, the armed forces of Ukraine launched a successful attack on the command post of the Black Sea Fleet, of course, in Crimea, of the occupiers near this, near the temporarily occupied, occupied Sevastopol. Glory to the armed forces of Ukraine. Now, this has been denied by uh, Russian sources. They're saying they shot down those as well, and we haven't seen any photographs of these command posts then hit. Uh, at the time I'm filming this, there are a number of Tu-95 uh, bombers from Russia in the air that will be launching uh, missiles into Ukraine as well. So I don't talk about the strike, just random strikes like that, because it happens so often, but it's still something interesting, I guess, to look over on that. As well with planes, the Liberty of Russia, of course, a regiment compiled of 
uh, like pro-Russian separatists that are either in Ukraine or people joining that. We know a lot of like Westerners have also joined that and they do cross-border operations, work in Russia, things like this. A lot of speculation that it's some like CIA fucking op there as well. But they have made some claims about hitting three aircraft only today. A fiery morning in the Moscow region. Unknown Patriots liquidated an AN-148. So this is an AN-148 here. It's basically like a private jet transporter from Antonov. Antonov, of course, is a Ukrainian company. An IL-20 aeroplane. This is an IL-20. This is a surveillance like EW plane. Any, um, I guess Australian Westerners will be um, familiar with like the P-3 Orion. It's very similar to that from at least my reading on this. And a Mi-28 uh, November, this one here. What I think, I think these Mi 28s, I th- like, again, I say <laughs> capability aside, I think they look fucking mean as shit. But yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, from Night Hunter helicopter belonging to the 354th uh, Special Forces Aviation Regiment, the helicopter will not be back in service for a long time. Its tail section was damaged, and the airplanes are in such a state that it is cheaper to write them off than to restore them. The estimated cost of the damage to Putin's security forces is more than $70 million. The incident occurred at the this airfield since... Uh, this is where government planes are based. The so-called doomsday planes, air command centers, in case of, for example, a nuclear war. Putin has one of these special planes, reconnaissance planes. So like we talked about the IL-20 there, or IL-20, as someone will correct me on. Anyway, Putin's power is incapable of defending itself and comes with bloody wars in the homes of its neighbors. They're incapable of putting their own house in order and know only one way to distract people from Russia's problems. They will not lead us into a happy future, so we will fight them. One unknown patriot is more expensive than 10 career military men of the Russian armed forces. We come out of nowhere and collapse their fragile system from within. We are feared by Shogu, Gorisimov, Sudovikin, because we will not fight for money, but for truth and freedom. So, of course, saying there that they want to fight for a better Russia. There, This is why so many people said this is some intel op with a lot of... Um, intelligence agencies are sort of pushing in on this as well. And of course, there are Russians that feel like, you know, Russia is going down a bad path and want to fight there as well. And it happens vice versa too. There are many Westerners who have gone and fought for Russia because they see that. So a lot of weird political stuff. And they put it with this photograph here of just the runway here, but there's no evidence of uh, any of these being taken out yet. That may then surface, but it was uh, released on another Intel thing as sabotage here. So uh, on September 20, Ukraine's main intelligence, GUR, claimed that unknown saboteurs blew up an AN-148, IL-20, and Mi-28 helicopter on uh, 18th September. So here. So it's coming from the GUR through this as well. The GUR stated that Russian authorities are investigating the sabotage and that significant pairs will not will be needed to put the two aircraft back into service due to damage. Although the GUI did not claim responsibility for the attack, it remains likely that it was orchestrated by Ukraine, especially given the recent attacks against Russian military infrastructure and uh, these nights against Peskov Air Base, against those large bombers too. Uh, Kurilo Budinov, head of the GUI, claimed that the strike was launched from within Russian territory. If confirmed, latest apparent attack likely illustrates Kiev's increasing cap- uh, capacity to coordinate attacks deep into Russian territory now what we're going to look at is more strikes well beyond ukraine's territory now this has been out for a few days now and it's probably nothing new to you guys but a so a lot of drone attacks in africa and sudan as well that people are saying or well, cnn had like the exclusive on this which creates a lot of problems for a lot of people but saying that it was ukraine behind then these drone attacks against Wagner-backed forces. So, 9th September, Ukraine special services were likely behind a series of drone strikes against Wagner-backed forces in Sudan. Now, this isn't, I'm not reading this from um, CNN, this is actually from an Intel group as well. Videos purport to show a succession of drone strikes in and around Amondom, uh, a city across the Nile River from the Sudanese capital Khartoum, which has become a focal point of fighting between the two forces, the RSF and the SAF. According to the outlet, two commercially available drones used widely by Ukrainian forces were involved in at least eight strikes. And there's videos of these strikes everywhere. I can't show you any of those online. Uh, Ukrainian text was also seen on the drone controller and the operator seen in the reflection of the controller reportedly appeared to be foreign. So I would say not black. Um, though uh, they were wearing a balaclava and were not identifiable. So that said, I can't, I've watched the footage and I can't see where they're talking about the um, the reflection. So I, I, I don't know, but this is where on the controller of this strike, you can see this video online, it is written in 
um, Cyrillic here as well. So that's where people have come from. This does not necessarily imply that the individual was Ukrainian. However, Wagner Group has worked closely with the RSF for several years, supporting them with the acquisition of arms and equipment, and the US accusing the mercenary force of providing the RSF with surface-to-air missiles in late May. Although an unspecified Ukrainian military source claimed that the Ukrainian special services were likely responsible for the attacks. The use of commercially available drones used by Ukrainian forces did not necessarily equate to Ukrainian government. Ukraine would also likely be more inclined to prioritise allocating resources of drones to counter Russian forces in Ukraine and strike targets within Russia, rather than Sudan or theatres of, con uh, of conflict. Subsequently, such claims, either confirmed or unconfirmed, are likely part of a broader information operations designed to demonstrate Ukrainian capacity and willingness to target Russian assets and interests beyond the Ukrainian battlefield. So, of course, like an intel game here that Ukraine is more pull around the world of this and construct Russia sort of wherever. Like, like Sarah said, we'll hunt down propagandists that will hunt down Russians wherever they are. We hear a lot of this going on. Anyway, Ukrainian officials have shown clear interest in conducting operations far beyond the Ukrainian battlefield in a bid to undermine Russia and uh, intelligence the GUR reportedly planned to strike Russian forces in Syria as well as Wagner Group operations in Mali. So, of course, we have seen also Ukraine strike boats that were carrying rocket fuel, jet fuel, I should say, to Syria and back that fuels Russian jets, things like this, things like Nord Stream, things like this. So it, it adds up from there. Now, we are going to have a look on the maps. Let me just double check. I've done everything. Yep, I've done all that I wanted to talk about there. Now, let's have a look at the maps. Now, very, very little is happening on the maps, but of course, we have the centre is Ukraine, the capital of Kiev, red areas occupied since 22, purple since 14. Of course, we have Russia, Belarus, uh, Poland, and Romania. Now, Poland, Ukraine, cracking their shits at each other. Now, where we're going to go, we've seen nothing down the west near Kherson. We've seen nothing in Robertini across any of the maps, both Ukraine, Russian, doesn't matter, no change there. And then we will come down into this Rosani area where we have seen some interesting shifts here that I can't find on any of the other maps. So we did see in just to the west of Novodonetsky that Russia made back some ground over the last couple of days, just here, 18, 19 through there. But then we've seen that Russia has then pushed Ukraine back over the waterway here that we know was a big step when Ukraine pushed across it, and that was confirmed across multiple sources. But it does seem that Russia has then actually been able to push Ukraine back to the north over the waterway from Novomorsky and Novodonetsky there. And we did know that those were important areas for Ukraine to get to try and then encircle down further into Zavitny here and reach then the first line of defensive works here. So the only change on this map was Russia making back some ground, but up and down the front line, no other changes on deep state, but I'm going to show you some areas. So of course, we're down here, the same sort of area again, near uh, Rohodka here, Novohorivka. So where we are is we're in the north east of the country just here. So let's zoom back in on where we are. So we have a slight advancement here. Not It doesn't show on Deep State, but this is then from uh, Suryak Maps. Now let's have a look here. So no, it is going to be this one. So now what we need to look at is what it then says. Oh my God, I've, I've stuffed all of this up. Of course, this is then Novohorivka, Novohorivka, you know, what we can line up is see these paddocks. This is then these paddocks through here, you can see, and into, see this and this, this and this. So it is saying that Russia have pushed beyond this paddock, that it's saying well down, you know, through this paddock and around these areas. So situation 522 on Lugansk front, Russian army improved the positions north of Novorivka by taking control over some hills north of the village. So in and around this area here. So it does show a fair difference and then a cut back in here. So it shows the same on the cut back in. This is fairly similar, but then it shows maybe up from here. So it shows more ground on the deep state, but then up through that region further. So then we're going to move a little bit to the north of there. So this is where we're looking. So near Zvatov, up in the northeast of the country. And we look at Novoselivsky here too. So let's look then at what Rybar says about this area, then we'll look at the map. Situation uh, Lugansk Front, 
during the last month, Ukraine Army slowly retook the lost positions in the western outskirts of Novosilivsky and during the last days managed to enter the first houses of the locality. So Deep State doesn't show any of this Ukrainian advancement here, but we will look at Suryak here. So saying that this was the slow advance, as they put it, through the last month, but now has entered then these first run of houses here. And we can see that it is showing fairly different upon these maps. It's saying down to really where the second street is. So down through here, that Ukraine now has entered these streets. So it shows fairly similar, but a little bit different. And that is then off geolocated footage of Russian strikes. And so if you Russian strike there, we know there's going to be Ukraine there and vice versa. That's how the maps get moved. Geolocated footage of strikes, of soldiers, things like this. Anyway, legends. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter, trying to keep them 20 to 25 to 30 minutes. I wish I could do 10. Anyway, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. If you'd like to support me, links down below, but never feel obliged. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.